Okay, so we have some announcements. Membership roster availability. Jason or Jason, do you want to talk about that since Sean's not here? Sure. So we've been working <laughs> quite a while um, to get the membership roster updated on the website. Um, there were concerns about security and putting everybody's email addresses out there, um, but we've gotten that taken care of. We're uh, maintaining it in a Google Sheet now, and that's embedded on a site uh, or on a page on our website um, that is password protected. So. Um, we're planning to send out the password to members um, after the meeting and we just wanted to make it a little more secure for everybody. Uh, the page is the same, so it's still, I can put the URL here, but you won't be able to access it. It's still coha-us.org slash about slash members. Um, and anyone that has signed up for a membership with the organization will get, get the password to that. So they have access to everyone in the organization. Uh, upcoming special interest groups. We've got the web dev interest group tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We have the acquisitions group next Tuesday at 12 Eastern. The consortia users group is meeting the 22nd at 9 a.m. The catalog and users group is meeting right before our next meeting. Yeah. And the sysadmin meeting will, the next sysadmin meeting will be the, let's see. That's the only one that I am unsure what the day of the week is. Okay. Uh, It'd be a Tuesday, the day right yeah. before our next general meeting. Yeah, uh, no, because the next general meeting will be the 8th. Oh, yeah, things got offset. Yeah. So cataloging will be the day after the next general meeting and sysadmin will be the Tuesday after. And then we're currently forming a book and crafting club where we'll read books and then when we talk about them, we can do crafting or coding or, you know, creation of some sort. Um, and that's up on the SIGS page if you're interested in joining us. Um, that just kind of at the last web dev meeting, I think, was when we we started talking about it. Um, so we're exploring off-topic, unofficial um, leisure groups as well as on-topic Koha groups. So if you have ideas for that too, um, we're happy to entertain. There's the link to the special interest groups. Um, so yeah. Yes. Does anyone have any other announcements? Okay. So regional groups. Um, we have the regional groups page on the site. And now, Jason, I'm forgetting, did I send that to everyone or just to the board for approval? I think you sent it out to everyone. So we were just going to remind everyone that okay. um, the, what we can offer to regional groups. Yes, I sent out um, an email or when I go look, if I actually only sent it to the board, then I'll make sure to send it out to everybody today about um, what we can offer for regional user groups, which um, we have, you know, our spot on the website for them. We have uh, Google groups. We can make a Google group for you um, or a list if you already have a mailing list for a local Koha US users group. Um, you know, like we kind of already have one up here, although we don't have a mailing list yet in um, mostly North Idaho, um, our consortium, and then Christopher Brandon's consortium that's just north of us. Um, we do some stuff together. Um, we can set up Zoom room meeting rooms for you if you want and post uh, both on our website and on our calendar information about meetings. And yeah, if you're interested in starting a user group or getting your existing group posted on the website, just email us at info at koha-us.org. Okay, we extended the call for proposals for the annual conference until the 24th of June. So if you haven't yet put in a proposal and are interested in talking, please do so. Uh, and I sent out an a email this morning 
just right before this meeting started also, so you should have a fresh email with the link to the form. Okay, call for volunteers, social media managers. So we have a Facebook page and a Twitter account that um, we're interested in getting like two or three more volunteers. Um, Megan, one of our board members is gonna help out, um, but just to, you know, make sure things get posted on the Facebook and the Twitter. Uh, Megan, did you wanna talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I can. I mean, you know, we have the page, so we just want to start making it active and putting ourselves out there. So getting on a schedule. And I think we don't want too many people, you know, on it, um, but just a few to kind of help and come up with ideas and figure out a schedule to get things posted. So we're just putting ourselves out there and people can see us more that we're actually active. Yeah, so if you're interested in that, um, let us know at info at koha-us.org and um, we'll get you all hooked up together for that um, or if anyone's interested in volunteering here that you can also volunteer here <laughs> um, okay committee reports conference so we are call for proposals was extended for the annual conference we'll be meeting right after this meeting um, same meeting room uh, otherwise, we don't really have a lot to announce for the conference committee yet. We're starting to get to a point where we're going to be um, ramping up some of the planning. There's like about a month in between, or a couple months in between like announcing and the location and the next things that we have to really start doing. So um, right now it's kind of the lull in conference plan. Well, not exactly, just not a lot of announcements. Development committee, Rhonda. Yeah, we um, met last Friday and we have two proposals. Um, both of them, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna work toward sending out the vote to the membership um, by around July, the 1st of July and then we will see what happens from there. One of them will need additional funding. Um, so uh, when, once you see the two uh, proposals, I'll highlight the one that needs additional funding. So if your library is interested in that, um, let me know. And that's all we have. Thanks, Rhonda. Okay, Education <laughs> Committee. Quick question oh, for development, yeah. Ron. Did you have any good luck with um, with either one of the other two vendors or any of the vendors? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. Yeah, I didn't even hear back from them. So wow. I, I did e Equinox. I did, um, but they want a minimum of what was it, fifteen hundred dollars, just to give me a quote. I mean, I was like, hmm, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> but I tried the other two. I tried. Um, Bib Libra and uh, PTS or whatever that is. PTS Europe. Yeah. 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 There. And um, I didn't get a response back from either of those. Okay. So. Before we go on to the education committee, uh, George is going to talk a little bit about our Kohathon survey results from the Kohathon we did earlier this year. We, uh, I sent out a link for a survey for the Kohathon. Uh, asking feedback um, from Kohathon. Was that, you know, ran over the, the uh, conference committee so quickly, I didn't have a chance to bring this up. Uh, but there's a link to the results. Um, we did it on SurveyMonkey. There was not a lot of response, probably because we waited so long after Kohathon was over before we sent out the, the survey. But um, the net promoter score is the one that the marketing people told us when we did our rebranding is like the most interesting one to look at. And that's the question that you see all the time. Would you recommend this to somebody else? And we had a 100% response on that, um, which is perfect. It means that everybody that responded to the survey either said they would, they gave that a number, a 10 or a nine. Um, so everybody that was all nine people that responded to the survey 
um, said that they would recommend Kohathon to somebody else. Um, and all of the feedback, uh, if you click on the link, you can see the answers, every answer to every question on the survey. It was a very short survey. It was just, you know, what did you like? What did you dislike? Is there anything specifically you'd like to see more of in the future? Um, and most of the people said it was great. Um, there were a couple of minor negative feedback things, uh, what's not to like. Um, the thing that people disliked the most was the technical problems. Um, and somebody said they had a hard time donating money. I had to go to PayPal uh, to donate on the site. I think that might have been my comment. Um, I don't remember because I took the survey such a long time ago. Um, but there was some uh, ideas there for things to do in the future. Um, two ideas, you know, somebody said template toolkit, more things that can be done with SQL and jQuery, and more international presence and presenters. So I always feel like, you know, we give everybody the chance to, uh, to uh, submit proposals for these things and we can only get, we can only have the presentations that people submit. So, and I think we let just about everybody that submitted a proposal do a presentation. So I think that might be on the conference committee to try to get more input or to make sure that people outside of the US um, have more opportunities to present. But other than that, I think the survey looked like the, the nine people out of what? How many people did we have watching at one point? Wasn't it up in the 90s? Yeah, in the 90s. I don't remember yeah. the exact number right now, but like I think the, or something. the one thing that we probably could really do better on is maybe have a survey ready to go like the day after next time mm -hmm. instead of, instead of, you know, it was such a press, press to get everything running that we kind of put off doing the survey until actually it was all over. And so it was, it was a, a long time between the actual time the survey went out and the event. So, but everybody's got the link to that and so you can all take a look at it if you want to. And I just wanted to make sure that that didn't get, that we, we actually brought that up, so. Thanks, George. Does anyone have any questions for the conference committee? When will we make a final decision about whether or not we actually have a conference? Well, uh, I think we're going to talk about it at the meeting today and kind of the deadline we gave ourselves had been the same as the deadline for the international conference, which has announced that it's going to go online and in person, which was um, like July 14th or July 17th is when we'll make the final decision by and it's one of the, it's basically the main thing we're talking about at the conference committee today. We'll talk a little bit about the proposals we have got and about if there's anything that we need to do um, this month before we meet again. But um, we're definitely going to be talking about that and kind of what we what we want to do either way um, today. That's most of what our meeting today will be about. But we'll have an announcement by yeah, July 17th was the day because we figured that would give us enough time if we had to cancel anything, but also still gives people enough time to make reservations if we decide to go forward in person. Maybe you could refresh everybody's memory. What, what were the dates for the conference? Uh, the oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to ask a question that was so hard to answer. No, I just, I had it open in a tab and then I went to a different page on the Koha US website and lost it. So I had to find it again. The 22nd to the 25th of September are the conference dates um, in McKinney, Texas is our plan. Uh, we may face a resurgence of COVID here in the DC area, um, which would make me reluctant to travel and would make you reluctant to ha be anywhere near me. Um, would there be an option to do a um, virtual talk? I think that's one of the things we'll talk about today. Um, I think, pro I mean, yeah, we'll, we haven't talked about if we do it in person, if we'll also do virtual talks. I know that's what um, the international conference is planning on doing. Um, that's part of my agenda for our meeting this, this 
not this afternoon, right after this meeting. Um, so to talk about if we're going forward, what's our plan? If we're going forward in person, what's our plan? If we're doing it online, what's our plan? If we're doing a mix, what's our plan? So we should have more information about kind of, even if we don't know for sure if we're doing it in person or not at our next general meeting, we should have a better idea of either way how we're gonna handle it. Just a, another quick question that I already know the answer to. If anybody wanted to come to the conference committee meeting after this meeting that isn't on the conference committee, would they be welcome to come to that meeting? Always. You're always welcome to come to any of the committee meetings if you want to find out more about the committee or specifically what we're talking about. Um, especially when we, like, I think a lot of people probably want to, might have input on this particular subject. Uh, so we'll be, but you're always welcome to come to any of the committee meetings. They're all listed on our website and they're mostly at the same time every month. The conference one sometimes moves around, but we usually try to meet after the general meeting. Um, sometimes we'll move it around a little bit if we have like a specific thing we need or we'll have an extra meeting, but we always make sure that's up on the calendar. So any other questions for the conference committee? Okay. I've got a question. Yeah. Uh, does, is anybody uh, here or anyone you know still on a travel moratorium? Uh, a lot of times it's academic libraries, but that might be a consideration. I, I, I'm on a conference committee and we had to cancel the conference. It wasn't so much because we were worried about, you know, infection and things, but people just weren't able to travel. Yeah, we know at least a couple members of the conference committee already have know that they're not going to be able to travel even if um like they they've been told that there's not going they're not going to be able to get paid for travel or have their travel paid for um at, at least till like a lot of them is even till next july is how long that we know for some people at least. So that's definitely something we're taking into consideration is that even if at that point people are able to travel, um, whether or not their organizations will send them because um, most people won't pay for themselves to travel somewhere to do a work conference. So, um, and they'd also have to like take vacation time. So that's definitely on our radar. Thank you. Okay, so education committee, we had some, a couple more um, webinars since our last meeting. Our very basic jQuery for your system that George did was since our last general meeting and that went well and the recordings up on the YouTube page now. Also, a our good time to promote it. <laughs> yes. um, I don't think that we've talked about it, but since Kohathon, we were able to snag our own URL for YouTube. So we are now at youtube.com slash Koha US. So you can see all of our videos there. Um, things are divided up into playlists. All of the trainings like uh, Lizette was talking about are on the webinars playlist, I think. Uh, you can dig through there and see that. So that's exciting for us as an organization, I think. Yes, that also means that in the future, if we want to do, if we're doing live streams, when you have a static URL that has a name like that, you can just go to like youtube.com slash Koha US slash live um, and see that they're live. So then if our, like we have a live stream that gets interrupted and we have to go back up, um, the same static link should work in theory um, for that. So that's very nice. Um, and also all our general meetings are recorded and put up there and a lot of our um, conference uh, webinar or presentations are up there as well as a lot of the special interest groups um, if you look in our videos. So there's a lot of information, lots of great videos up there. Um, and it's also really nice that we're recording our special interest groups because um, if you can't make it, you can still see what was talked about 
and that's really nice. Um, so education, we're also still working on a cup, some future webinars, though I don't think we have any dates set for new webinars yet, though we have a couple planned um, on our radar, just figuring out dates. Possibly one later this month or early next month, another sandbox webinar that's a little more advanced than the one that we did in February. We talked about doing a, uh, the webinar I did was very, very basic jQuery. And so the sequel will be very basic jQuery. Um, and a prerequisite for that would be watching the first one. But we're hoping to do that. I think we talked about July. Yes. And we've got other ones on the horizon. And, you know, if you're interested in a doing a webinar about something Koha related, um, you can let us know at either info at koha-us.org or at education at koha-us.org. Um, and we can talk with you about that. Uh, any questions for the education committee? Okay. Fundraising, Todd. Yeah, I don't have anything to report. Okay, any questions for Todd? Okay, uh, John's gonna be a little late. He was teaching this morning, so we'll come back to the finance uh, committee report once he makes it. Um, someone joined right as I said that and it would have been hilarious if it was John, which has happened before. Okay, open discussion, bugs, issues, etc. I know a lot of people either just upgraded or are upgrading like in the next week to 19 or 20, no, 1911. Uh, so that might be something if people want to talk about. We updated last month and it's been mostly pretty um, pretty smooth. Uh, we didn't have any problems with our jQuery, though I know someone else in the sysadmin sig yesterday did, um, which was bizarre. We've always had problems with our jQuery. Um, we do have a weird transfer slip thing going on, but we think that might be related to our circ and find rules because some libraries are open and some aren't. We haven't been able to confirm that yet. Um, and there was a weird write-off bug that I think has been where like you couldn't write off a partial, if a fine had already been partially paid or written off, you couldn't write it off if you wrote off selected instead of hitting just the write-off button on that specific item. And there is a bug for that and I'll go find it. But I also think that that has been patched maybe now. I know they we're gonna try to get it fixed really fast. I just want to report that anyone who hasn't been upgraded yet, um, I think we put a stop on the upgrades. We need to check a couple things and uh, I think they're going to resume today. But if you check your main page of your staff client, you should see the information there. So the um, using write off selected will not allow for a different amount to be written off. Um, is what the bug is called and it's signed off, but part of it was that if it it was uh, like not, not specifically it was doing it on ones that, or how we found it was it was doing it mostly on ones that already had a partial payment written off, although I guess from the bug report it looks like that wasn't necessary. It was only, it wasn't letting you do a partial write-off at all if you were trying to do anything less than the total write-off, total amount of the fine. 
um, it wouldn't let you write it off. And that's been signed off, but it doesn't look like it's been pushed yet. Yes, yeah, so I was just about to say it looks like that one's already been got a, 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 We haven't upgraded yet, so I've got nothing to talk about. Yeah, overall, the update for us at least went very smoothly. Um, we, oh, I guess there is some changes to some tables that um, because the debit and account, let's see, uh, the account type and manual invoice types. So like the types of payment and types of charges uh, got changed how they're stored in Koha. And so um, there was some table changes. And also since you can now have multiple guarantors, uh, the guarantor ID, how that works is a little bit different. So if you're a Bywater partner, there's a report probably, I don't know how it's working for people who haven't updated yet, if they put it in after you update or as part of the update notice. Um, but there's a report you can run that tells you all the reports that need to be fixed. So that's good to be aware of, especially if you use a lot of reports that have that. We only had a few in our system that have been run anytime recently. Um, that needed to be fixed. And most of them had only been run because we're cleaning up. We have like 700 and something reports and a lot of them are duplicates. So we're working on trying to like clean up ones where the only difference between this one and that one is that like the second report has one extra column. Um, that so. report that you're referring to as well, um, that can be found on the staff homepage. Provided you're a Bywater customer, right? Yeah. Um, So we're not upgraded either yet, um, but we're excited about some of the stuff coming in the upgrade. Um, one of the developments we paid for was for the club um, club holds feature, um, which we're not going to be able to use right out of the box because of, of uh, this bug. So that's another one that's been signed off on already, but it's something to keep an eye on, which makes it immensely more useful for consortia. Currently, if you place a club hold, it puts the pickup location to the staff member's current logged in location, um, this bug would fix it so that it would default to the patron's home branch so we could have a list of consortium wide. Um, and just to kind of explain our thinking behind this is um, we've had this long standing sheet of paper where patrons can check little boxes and say, I want new titles from James Patterson and Danielle Seal and all these things. Um, so our goal with the development was to make it to integrate that into Koha. So um, people could opt into patron clubs for each author or um, we could do it for them. And then whenever a new book comes out, we would have the James Patterson Club. And then um, we could just push a button and everybody in that club would get holds um, on those new titles in one click in a random order um, to keep it fair. Uh, so that, that was our use case for club holds. Um, there, there are other ways you can use it for sure. We had considered, since the way it behaves is the way it behaves right now, we considered doing um, individual club holds for each library. So there's a James Patterson Club at Library A and Library B, which would work for us. But, um, but we're going to try and hold out and wait till we can just have one big club. Uh, I think that's more consortia friendly. 
I'm going to the bug right now to look at the, uh, the change you asked for. Um, and I'm just curious, um, because I don't want to read the whole thing because it's probably long, um, is choosing the library where the staff is logged in or choosing the patron's home library, those are those options? Um, so, yeah, it's not a system preference. It's actually every time you place a hold, there's a little checkbox in it. Okay. It, it's set to, by default, I think, after this patch is implemented, it's set to the patron's home library, but you can uncheck it. To okay. send it to the to the staff members library. I was just curious because options are options are good. Yes, yes, it is an option. We're also excited about that. Once no no one in our consortium really wants to use it until two three eight two zero is part of it. But we are all looking forward to that <laughs> um, for the same reason. We don't actually have any papers like that right now um, but we get asked all the time by patrons like can you just put me on hold for all the James Patterson books or like CJ Box is the one I feel like I get asked about the most so see and I I don't want it to be I, I, I want to use it without that uh, pick up at home library option because I don't want to manage it for everybody I want to teach them how to create clubs and make them do it themselves yeah, and that's been a big discussion for us because um, I have some libraries who are eager to just hit that button and place the hold, but some of them are like, you're going to do that for us, right? <laughs> and I'm like, we still need to work out those details because um, it would make sense for the first library that adds the copy to place all the holds to me. But if they're nervous about that, we do have in-house cataloging staff that could probably take care of it in a word we do more cataloging than Nichols does. So we're a little different, yeah. different setup. Yeah, our, our answer to you guys will do that for me, won't you, is almost always no, we won't do that for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, other exciting new features, there's the claims return enhancement. Uh, so claims return functions really nicely now. You can like mark a book as claimed returned from the patron checkout screen uh, and then if you check an item in it'll tell you that that item has been claimed returned and there's different like resolutions and you can set a warning threshold so if someone has like too many claims returned uh, items it'll tell you so if you're like hey you have like eight claim return items stop claim returning items just return them <laughs> you know or whatever I don't really know what we haven't figured out what our use case is for the warning yet but um, it's nice that it has it for people who want that. Um, there is a new bug that was reported yesterday that I'll put in the chat about adding a curbside pickup option to Koha. Um, I guess yesterday Evergreen announced that they were doing it and um, someone said, well, this might be a nice thing for Koha to do too. And I know um, Right now we're using a third party software to um, like we send out a link in our holds notices and people can sign up for the um, for the pickup like time, but some patrons are getting confused because it's just like a kind of a random URL that's associated with the scheduler and it's a whole new thing to learn. So if there was something that was built into Koha, especially because at least we're planning on continuing to do curbside after. Um, and so if that's something that you'd be interested in is having like a curbside pickup option, the bug is in the chat if you wanted to comment or follow that to see where it goes. Well said, I'm not sure exactly what L Lucas created, but he does have some jQuery that he came up with to help with curbside. Oh yeah, I think I saw that on the partners list someone was talking about. And it looked like it was when you placed a hold, it like replaced the notes function on the patron side with some um, pickup information. And so um, doing it somewhat jQuery might be nice. I think the... Um, I put it in your Slack. Oh, thanks. The um, Evergreen one had an option where you could set the pickup time after 
the hold had arrived. I'm just going to look at this real quick. And yeah, it looks, just looking at the jQuery real quick, it looks like it's when you place the hold, you select the day of pickup and the time. Um, and if you're arriving by car or on foot. I think that's what it looks like. Um, but I see arriving by blimp is an option. I mean, like it looks car like- Car and foot are the only two options. I mean, you could probably add whatever you wanted if you were adding this jQuery. <laughs> it looks like it just makes a little, um, let's see, arriving by. So oh, it stores cool. all that information in the, the note. The, like yeah, I think it like field. replaces the uh, reserves note field from okay. what I saw on the partners list yesterday. Let me... Sorry, Fred, I didn't mean to talk over you. Quite all right. Yeah, drone is another good good one. I noticed John is here if you're interested in the finance report. Oh, good. Welcome, John. We had uh, skipped the finance report. Thank you. I know everybody's just been dying to hear the finance committee report because everybody's always dying to hear the finance committee report. Um, we don't spend much money this time of the year. We're in between filings and, and conference season has not yet started up. Uh, other than, actually, we didn't spend any money last month, so that was good. Um, but we are caught up on our filings, of course. We, we pay $40 to the state of Kansas, and all of our reports have been, uh, have been accepted and um, recognized as being filed. We, as of the end of last month, we're at 79 members. I'm very glad to report we actually had somebody join just today. Um, they, they, they paid the invoice that was sent to them. So we're now actually at 81 members as of about an hour ago. So that's good. Um, there's not really a whole lot to report. Most of the activity that you see on the bank statement for May was the transferring over of the money that was collected from Kohathan from PayPal into uh, the bank account. You'll recall that we did not request a refund for the exhibitor space from ALA, choosing instead to transfer that payment over to 2021. So when it comes time for ALA 2021, the exhibitor space does not need to be accounted for in the budget because we've just simply forwarded that expense uh, or that payment along. A few other things to note, we did get our Amazon Smile quarterly donation of 8237. Uh, this is still lower than what we had budgeted and the budget of course was based on what had been basically six quarters of a very high amount. Fred always jokes here that he needs to spend more money on Amazon. So now I'm going to say it. Fred, spend more money on Amazon. I <laughs> Amazon was practically priceless. <laughs> Um, but we did get that quarterly donation in the amount of 8237, making our year to date receipts from Amazon Smile 15037. Uh, we did also get some threadless activity. Threadless is the merchandising shop that we work through. Uh, we did receive 46 donations, 46 dollars in donations uh, through April threadless.com activity. And we do have some additional uh, activity coming from May as well, according to the Threadless dashboard. So I expect that will be reported uh, next month. We are now entering the conference expense season and the conference committee has talked about 
a few things that we will be purchasing uh, date neutral at this point in time in the event that we do not meet this year for conditions out of everybody's control. But that is the next slate of expenses, if you will, that we will incur as an organization uh, are things related to the conference itself. So that's pretty much it for the Finance Committee report. I'm happy to entertain any questions anybody might have. Just a comment, I got my Koha US t-shirt this past week. So I was gonna wear it today and I forgot. Ah. <laughs> I actually um, want to order one and um, the, they're the, the generic keyboard or computer stickers that uh, Jason put up there. I keep on meaning to order one of those when I go to order something else, but since I haven't ordered the something else yet, I haven't ordered that either. Are there Koa US face masks? Not yet. I'm in the process of getting that set up. Um, oh, good. So we should have the, that as a product soon. Uh, we talked about maybe doing some more interesting designs than just the logo. So uh, it's on my to-do list. Yeah, and for the masks, we can't just add it like we can other products. We have to email Threadless and work with them. Um, so not quite as easy as adding the other other options but that is on our plan um, in the chat this is the library that I'd seen yesterday uh, that's their like how their curbside works and it just has some screenshots of like what their no longer a notes box <laughs> looks like for the scheduling the date and time of pickup but it you do like the reason that that doesn't really work for us is because we are getting things from different branches and we don't want people like scheduling their pickup before their item is here. Um, so, but that might work for other libraries. And that's, min I don't know how to say that. I'm sure I'll minnow sleeper, minnowed sleeper library in New Hampshire. So. The development that we're excited about at Round Rock is the one that we paid for. It's the update or enhancement to the J to A uh, cron job. So now you can do all kinds of things with your patrons um, updating from one category to another based on a whole uh, list of different parameters. So, um, and I had Nick, dem I think it was Nick, demonstrate um how it worked uh to me and there's he's since our discussion he's added three or four new parameters just to make it even more robust um so what we were using it for what in our old system what we did was um when people came in for a new card we would make them new members and they would be a new member for 30 days where they only got to check out five books and i don't know some other stuff and then after 30 days, we had this SQL that just ran and updated them to new members. If you know, they had been a member for 30 days, they had less than $5 in fines, and they had a valid driver's license number um, in their account. So now we'll be able to check all of that stuff and update um, members from new to regular um using using the um, parameters that were in there already and the ones that nick added um, so it's it's kind of cool and i'm thinking there's a lot of different options that people can use for this kind of thing it's way more robust you can you can check a value for any field in the borrowers um, record and use that as you know, the condition um, and, and you, know, you know number of fines and uh, uh, but just a bunch of stuff plus you can still do the um, junior or uh, juvenile to adult stuff so I think it's pretty cool
anyone have any other things they're excited about from their upgrade or other bugs that they've seen? Well, sort of. It, uh, I posted this the list U.S. list last week. Haven't uh, didn't get a response. Um, for various reasons, we ended up upgrading our 1705 in-house aging server, aging refurbished server to a cloud server and went to, I think, 1911. And now we can't run our overdues reports. Um, we get the first 20, but when we try downloading, there's nothing there. If you try to go to the second page, there's nothing there. I'm not sure what happened. Is it just a SQL report you're running? Or yes. are you have you tried putting a limit on it just to see if it shows more than twenty? Like to limit ten thousand or something? Uh let's see. The report says I think there's something like fifty seven. So it goes into three pages. So in theory there are more than twenty there. Yeah, so if you add like limit and a number at the end of the report, then it forces Qua to show everything past the, the first um, the first twenty. Okay, I'll try that. Thanks. Well, I was just cleaning out what we've got uh, um, in Bugzilla that has uh, Bugzilla at kohaus.org as a, as a uh, CC on it. I cleaned out all the ones that uh, said they're resolved. And I'm looking at it, and this is the oldest bug in there that, um, that we've been following. And it's the one to set up a digest option for the hold available notice. Um, so that would be a good one if anybody wants to comment on a bug and say, hey, this is a good idea to fix. That, that's the one that we should all be complaining about. And if anybody wants to see what, uh, where's the link? No, I can't find the window I have open. I think the the page we have is koha-us.org slash bugzilla. Nope. Might just be bug. Yeah, try just bugs. There we go. All of the bugs that we talk about whenever we're doing these meetings, I try to add them to the list. So if you go to that link, uh, koha-us.org slash bugs, those are that should have all the bugs that we've been talking about where somebody actually specified a bug number. And there's about 40 of them on there right now um, that we've been following. So I have a weird thing that's not a bug yet, I guess. Is anybody else using um, the cart to shelf for quarantining items? You are, George. I saw you raise your hand. Um, we're having yes. weird, I opened a ticket. I have a buy water ticket. Um, Donna passed it to Nick and he hasn't responded yet. But like sometimes when people check in things with holds, it creates two um, lines in the logs. And it shows the first check-in is moving the item to the cart, and then the second line is moving it back to its permanent location, like at the exact same time. I, so it's sort of working, but not really working for us. We did have another issue where we had a bunch of legacy data, um, which predated the permanent location field. So um, like I had 300,000 items that didn't have permanent locations. So as they were getting checked in, um, they were just blanking out their shelf locations because there was nothing to revert to. So I don't know if that's related. Um, I was just wondering if anybody else was seeing kind of that weird behavior where if you check in an item and it should be going to quarantine, but then you ignore the hold, it's not 
actually being quarantined. I don't know, but I really needed Tums now after you're saying all this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, maybe I'm just thinking about all the possibilities that are going along right now at this very moment. Thanks, Jason. I have 100% regretted like even suggesting doing it because I have I have 47 libraries and I have two camps, the people that love it and the people that hate it, and it's a system-wide thing. So I regret using it for the most part um, because of the unexpected stuff we're running into. But on the other hand, it is helpful. Um, I've been able to highlight things that are in quarantine so people know not to pull that, those holds on their holds queue. Um, and the patrons know that it's going to take a little longer because those things are quarantined. They can see that on the OPEC. So there are benefits, but I'm still not sure like what's going on with it completely. Okay, yeah, so I act something to make you feel better. Here's a problem I'm having that you will probably not encounter. If you're trying to stage multiple files um, for import, if you try staging a lot of them all at once, it doesn't import all the records in each file. Oh God, I did not need to hear that. Well, the files have 90,000 park records each, and I'm trying to do maybe 10, 20 of them at once doesn't work. So I'm going to have to do it again one by one. This is a mark import? As, as far as I know, it's always been problematic to import that many mark records at once. And it, the recommendation I've always heard was to use the command line, which obviously isn't at the, you know, it's not available to most librarians. But yeah, you, you really should split up your, your mark files I don't know what the what the upper limit is, but that sounds like too many. Like I just don't. I think it just doesn't work. For what it's worth, I recommend it always to be at five thousand or less. Uh, and okay. I've processed. I routinely process twenty thousand at a time without a problem. But I've I've been reluctant to go above that in terms of the num the amount of time it would take. Um, and and other reasons and and while i've had problems with staging mark records it was due to outdated use of the the temp directory on the server and the the non presence of a parameter in the cohod dash cont file but i've been able to load 20,000 records uh, several files of 20,000 records without any issue normally taking about maybe 5 to 10 minutes to stage and then another five to 10 minutes to get them loaded and indexed. Well, I found I can stage a file with 250,000 records, but yeah, as Elaine said, it takes a long time. So I split them up into three smaller files. And then I realized I was uh, running out of this space on my DigitalOcean account, which is why I got the server that's going to show up in the next your next Amazon uh, report. So if any, um, this is moving on to a different topic or back to an old one. Um, it just occurred to me that I haven't shared this on the wiki yet, but I do have, um, if you are using the card feature, let me share my screen really quickly. I can't because the host has disabled screen sharing. No, I can. Yeah, okay. They upped our security settings. I think I, I can toggle that off at some point, but I haven't gotten in there yet. So everybody should see Dragon's Fat Cat, right? Yep. So this, I think, is what Jason was talking about for patrons. We have the um, shelving location here. The, uh, the code is card, but we called it recently returned. And uh, I have some jQuery running that changes that gives it this highlight in the uh, OPAC and this highlight in the in the staff client. And so if anybody wants that, um, I'll put it on the wiki, but this is for the OPAC right here. 
And the condition that you have to pay attention to is you have to put the name, where I have in this code where it says recently returned, you have to change that to whatever you're calling that card location. So if you're calling it quarantine, you can change that to quarantine. Um, or if you're calling it recently returned, or if you're calling it book card or whatever, you have to change that text. And then for the staff client, um, that's the code for the, to do the same thing in the staff client. And I'll try to, you know, I've been thinking I should put that on the wiki and it hasn't occurred to me, but I'll stick that up there to give some time. And the one for the staff client, there's the same caveat there is you have to change the wording where I have in quotes there recently returned. You need to make it whatever you're, uh, whatever you're calling that author and its value um, in the OPAC or the staff client. I also noticed that Dragon's Fat Cat, one of them doesn't have a shelving location now, which makes me think I've got the problem that Jason just described. So fortunately, I keep these in my desk. Yeah, last I heard on that ticket, um, Danny was able to copy everything that was there, but they were going back through backups to see if they could fill in the stuff that had already been wiped out. So um, yeah, you might want to run a, just a check for nulls on permanent location in your items table, see what's going on there. That was like fun. Oh boy, I get to write a report. That actually didn't sound bad. Okay, well, it's 9.30 here, so I think we're going to wrap up so we can uh, go ahead to the conference meeting. So maybe a few minutes in between um, before we start the conference meeting. So thank you everybody for coming. And our next meeting is gonna be July 8th, same time, same place.